My name is Zane, and I just spent two weeks living out of my car and exploring the western half of Colorado, going on four-wheeling adventures with my friends, finding dozens of abandoned mines and ghost towns, as well as hiking to some of the highest 14,000-foot mountains in the entire state. I spent my first week in the Breckenridge area, and then the rest hanging around the old mining towns of Silverton and Uray, and I've gotta tell you that it was one of the most fun experiences of my entire life. I'm only 19 years old, and this was the first time that I've gone on a trip entirely by myself, so I'll admit that when I I was planning it out, I was pretty nervous. I pretty much spent my entire first day making the long drive to my first destination of Buena Vista, which was more than 12 hours away from my home in Arizona. Along the way, I stopped to take a few pictures of rural Arizona and New Mexico, and as the day progressed, I started getting very tired and decided to pull over and sleep in the small town of Saguache. Now, I've gotta be honest, I'm over 6 feet tall, and making room to sleep in my tiny Ford SUV was not at all easy. Additionally, I had to layer up because otherwise I would literally wake up in the middle of the night freezing. Nevertheless, I got through the first night, and before continuing to Buena Vista, I decided to take some photos of the town and its mountains, which had some awesome clouds hanging around them. After reaching Buena Vista, I decided to go up the nearby County Road 390 to look for the abandoned banker mine in Mount Huron. I was able to take my car a little bit past the restored ghost town of Winfield, however, I opted to park it after the road got rougher and decided to hike the rest of the way. Parking and hiking the rest of the way was something I had to do for pretty much everywhere I went, as unfortunately my two-wheel drive SUV can only handle so much. After hiking for about a mile or so, I reached the banker mine, which still has two structural remains and a giant tailing pile indicating that it was once a sizable operation. But the main attraction of the day was hiking here on Peak, which at the time I hadn't even bothered to check that it was a 14er, and I'll be totally straight up, the views on this hike were absolutely incredible, and you can get a great view of the Rockies from the top, however, I was not prepared whatsoever for the elevation gain, and I struggled to complete parts of the hike and to get back to my car. On day three, I was originally supposed to visit the Mount Sherman mine near the beautiful town of Leadville. However, road work prevented me from doing this, so I briefly checked out the ghost town of Oro City, which dates back all the way to 1859. Afterwards, I saw the Dairy Mining Site Camp along County Road 24, and then somehow accidentally came up upon Twin Lakes, which worked out pretty well because I had been planning to hike to some of the mines there anyways. Twin Lakes is one of my favorite places in all of Colorado. With the lakes having a majestic mountain backdrop, coupled with a beautiful small town that retains its western charm. Hiking along a trail above the town, I found some incredibly well-preserved mine remains, including a stamp mill, boarding house, and some large structure which I don't entirely know what it was. However, if I had to guess, possibly an ore chute of some kind. These structures are some of the coolest mining remains I've ever found, and are surrounded by the absolute most gorgeous scenery possible. However, I cannot entirely figure out what mine they were part of. Of. My best guess is that they were part of either the Barlett Shaft or Gordon Manganese Mine. Also, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications on to support this channel as I attempt to grow it out of its early phases. I'm super grateful for all of you. I slept through the night at the ghost town of Preston near Breckenridge, which I actually made a documentary about a few years back. Link is in the description in top right hand corner. In the morning, I helped my friend Larry, who works for Breck History, officially start the Preston Preservation Project, and we stayed stabilized one of the cabins for the winter, and then climbed on top of the nearby Jesse Mill, which is also being stabilized. When I visited Colorado last year, I helped Larry and a construction supervisor named Ty restore the Sally Barber mine, and it felt great to be back with them saving history once again. Afterwards, I traveled up Peru Gulch to try and find some of the abandoned mines I had missed when I last visited the Gulch in 2020, and boy oh boy did I find a gold mine worth of stuff. I found multiple ore bin structures along the side of the mountain, and a bunch of really well-preserved boilers at different mine sites, some of which even still had their manufacturer's name on them. After getting back into phone service, I met up with my friend Cameron to go camping for the next few days. It took almost an hour to load up the trailer, but hanging out at our camping site was a ton of fun, and sleeping was actually a lot better in his tent than my car, because he had a heater and it was much bigger than my Ford, allowing me to catch up on some missed sleep from the past few days. On day 5, we visited dozens of mine tailings all across Leadville's long and Dairy Hill, including the Black Cloud Mine. We found a ton of collapsed remains that we can only speculate as to what once was, which I honestly find to be a lot of fun to think about. We even explored a cabin site that looks to have been prospected fairly recently, but on the way down, 
disaster struck. The axle on the Jeep trailer we had been towing along burst off, and we spent the next few hours having to get it towed. Unfortunately, because it was an off-road recovery, the towing bill alone cost my friend $1,500, and as a result, he decided to work overtime rather than continue our trip, which meant that I had to return to hiking everywhere. On day six, I drove to Breckenridge and got to do a tour at the Country Boy Mine for free as part of a job interview I had, and after that, I visited the ghost town of Wapiti, which didn't take too long to get to and had a gold mine of mine tailings and remains around it. On day 7, I visited the restored Paris Mill near Alma. The Paris Mill was built in 1895 along the Mosquito Range of the Rockies and today it's been restored to its original beautiful state. After checking it out, I crossed the river to look at another abandoned mining building I had spotted in the trees and I followed the cables on the ground all the way to the mountain and looked up to see the Hungry Five Mine clinging perilously to the mountainside. After this, I drove up the road to find some more mining remains and get some photos of the snow-capped mountains and then continued along my way to my next destination of the Levick Mill which is located near Fairplay. After briefly checking out the mill, I decided to hike up to the top of the beautiful Mount Sherman. Along the way, there were dozens of scattered abandoned mine remains including old boilers and rails which are super hard to find now because during World War II, much of the metal at abandoned mines was melted down for the war effort. From the peak of Mount Sherman, you can get a great view of both Fairplay and Leadville made even better by the snow. And remember the Mount Sherman mine that I mentioned I couldn't see earlier? I got to see that mine from the top of the peak, and I even had decent phone service. On the next day, I decided to cancel my planned trip to Wyoming and to stay in the Alma area and hike up to the Hungry Five mine. This hike was at times very dangerous because the miners' trails that had once been used to reach it were largely invisible by now, and it's one of only a few hikes where I actually asked myself if I should turn around. But the reward was well worth it. The mine is just barely hanging on, however old equipment was still visible, including an extremely rare minecart. I even got to check out the inside of the tram station, which still had the old metal wheels used to keep things running. It wasn't late at all yet, so I drove up to Breckenridge and hiked to the Mayflower Ghost Town in Lower Mohawk Lake. There were so many building remains that I don't have time to cover all of them, but coupled with the gorgeous waterfall and lake, this ghost town quickly became one of my favorite places in western Colorado. On day 10, I decided to make the long hike across Mosquito Pass so I could see things like the North London Mine and Mill. For most of the day, the hike went well, and I reached the peak of the pass after a couple hours, which was pretty cool. However, on the way back, I decided to take a path to see the remains of the South London Mine, and I ended up getting snowed on for about two hours, which left me super cold, and hiking back down the mountain, my energy reserves were mostly depleted. On day 11, I officially said goodbye to the Leadville area to head up Independence Pass so I could visit the ghost town of Ruby. While hiking to the town, I also saw the Grizzly Lake Reservoir, which was literally bluer than the sky. Now, originally, I had planned to also see the ghost town of Ashcroft that same day. However, due to the amount of time I spent photographing Ruby's extensive remains, I ended up having to save that town for day 12, when I explored its preserved remains early in the morning before making the five-hour drive to Silverton. After visiting Ashcroft and driving to the rural town of Montrose, I decided I had enough time in the day to go and visit the Cimarron Canyon Rail Exhibit, where Denver and Rio Grande Western Locomotive Number 278 sits on a restored trestle, along with a stock car and caboose. After this, I continued the drive to Silverton and got to traverse the Million Dollar Highway for the first time by myself, which largely because of the fact that there aren't any guardrails preventing you from falling into the canyon, is oftentimes called the Highway to Hell. After entering the Red Mountain Mining District, I visited the abandoned Longfellow Mine, one of the district's most beautiful preserved head frames, and I even noticed EPA work at a nearby mine. I still had a little bit of sunlight left in the day, so afterwards I did a hike at the ghost town of Chattanooga along the highway to another abandoned mine, and then I finally arrived in Silverton. On day 13, I got to do a hike that I've been wanting to do for more than three years, finally getting to visit Island and Ice Lakes. This area is probably one of the prettiest places in all of North America, and it deserves its own video, which I'm sure I'll make in the future. I also hiked to the nearby V2 Peak and got to get some incredible incredible shots of not just Island and Ice Lakes, but also Clear Lake and the entire San Juan Mountain Range. If you only visit Silverton once in your life, make sure you visit Island Lake because there's hardly anywhere in the world more special than it. There's even some scattered remains of abandoned mines along the way, reminding visitors of the rich mining history of the San Juans. And before I made the hike, I actually visited the nearby Bandora Mine, which has some sizable remains and an absolutely incredible mountain backdrop. On day 
day 14, I stopped for lunch at my childhood favorite restaurant called High Noon Burgers and then made the extremely difficult hike to the abandoned corkscrew turntable which used to service Otto Mears' Silverton Railroad. This hike was really hard because I couldn't find where the trail was and I had to slide down a mountain to be able to get to it. I then explored the railroad bed for a bit and hiked to the American Girl and Colorado Boy Mines, two impressive head frames that have been relatively preserved over the past century. On day 15, I explored Yankee Boy Basin by Ure, getting to see things like the Camp Bird Mine and Atlas Mill. When I parked my car to get out and hike the rest of the way, I got a dark reminder of what happens to unsafe drivers. Along the way up, there were numerous remains of abandoned mines and waterfalls, and the view from the top of the basin is nothing short of breathtaking. I then decided to keep exploring and traverse Blue Lake Pass, getting to see the beautiful Mount Sneffels along the way. As the name of the pass suggests, there's also three stunning blue lakes along the path, with the lower one being the most famous and bluest. It was heading back to my car that I started to realize just how tired I was and how much my lack of sleep was starting to catch up to me. I had hiked an insane amount over the past two weeks without any actual days off, and my weariness would dog me for the rest of the trip. On day 16, my friend Brad and I took a quad and explored Silverton's Prospect Gulch and then went up Hurricane and California Passes. At the top of both, you can see Lake Como along with numerous abandoned mines. When we finished hanging out, I headed up Corkscrew Pass and to my surprise, I actually got my car decently far before pulling over. At the top of the pass, you can get some beautiful shots of Red Mountain and I went off trail and climbed to the peak of the mountain, from which I spotted some new mines in the distance that I'll definitely have to explore on my next trip. Heading into the morning of my second to last day, I slept at a great spot near Ure and then drove to the ghost town of Alta, which sitting at almost 12,000 feet, has some incredible scenery and numerous well-preserved buildings, which make it a must-visit if you're in the Telluride area. After this, I spent like 30 minutes trying to find a parking space in Telluride and then began to hike the famed Imogene Pass. My goal with this hike was not to reach the top, but instead to get to the ghost town of Tomboy and the various mines along the way, which may warrant a documentary in the future. It was during this hike that I realized the true beauty of Telluride and the San Juans. I mean, it's absolutely incredible how such perfectly formed mountains could ever exist in this world. After hiking for a bit, I found some awesome mining remains that despite being in terrible condition, can still be somewhat made out as to what their original design was, like this tram station or this stamp mill on the mountainside. Once you reach Tomboy, you'll find so many remains that it's hard to even see everything. This is the highest elevation ghost town in North America, and even though the hike up was hard because of my lack of energy, I have absolutely no regrets, and I really hope to make a documentary about this place in the future. On my 18th and final day, I went to a meeting with the owner of the Coming Wonder Mine in Silverton at the San Juan County Museum to discuss potentially restoring it, which actually went decent, and I'll definitely update you guys on what we choose to do with it. During the early afternoon, I got some awesome shots of the Durango and Silverton train operating around the town, and for my final hike on this trip, I decided to explore Mini Gulch near the ghost town of Eureka, which I made a documentary about a few years ago. This was an awesome gulch and had a ton of mining remains like aerial tram towers, mill foundations, a boarding house, and the Caledonia and Kitty Mac mines. I also got some beautiful fall shots of the trees, all in all making this a great way to end my trip, and after staying the night in Durango, I began the arduous drive back home to Arizona the next day. All in all, despite my sleeping conditions, this was an absolutely awesome trip, and I had a ton of fun constantly seeing things that most people who live in Colorado will never even see. Next time I do something like this, I would like to have a Jeep, however, because having to hike everywhere unnecessarily wears you out, and I'm not joking when I say that I might have done like 60 or 70 miles of hiking across that two-week time span. Thank you so much for watching this channel's premiere video. Make sure to subscribe for many more future videos about ghost towns, railroads, and mines all across Colorado, Arizona, and maybe even Nevada eventually, and I will see you all next time.